Uh, I wanted to get something out the door this week that is sort of public facing um, because I've been doing non-public facing things all week. And uh, the, the thing that I spoke about last was information versus information resources and how information can be sort of transposed from one medium or substrate to another and the information resource is the particular substrate uh, that carries some information and then it gets associated with that information is sort of the place you go to get a certain piece of informational content. And that made me think of load-bearing uh, information and load-bearing information resources to the extent that they have to be, they, you know, people depend on them. So they have to be accurate or at least internally consistent. Um, yeah, they, I mean, they don't even need to be, you know, represent anything in reality. You, know, you think about sort of fictional accounts, myths and whatever, but a myth still has to be sort of, you know, if a myth is going to be uh, uh, morally instructive in some way it still has to sort of like you know make sense um so when i sort of think about i guess the reason why i'm sort of thinking about this is because i'm thinking about how information can sort of decay over time or at least how an information the information on the information resource are like the uh and when you sort of think about, you know, when you take a measurement or when you make a particular statistic, well, the statistic for last year doesn't work for the, the you know, doesn't work for this year uh, kind of thing. Uh, and so you need to go and get it again. So information can become stale uh, or it can just be imprecise or inaccurate. And uh, so, you know, we've all seen this. Um, representation of, uh, you know, we've seen the sort of the targets. There's a bunch of these. They're kind of everywhere. Um, this isn't too bad. Um, but where you've got the, uh, you know, sort of the notions of accuracy versus precision. Um, when you sort of think about how that pans out as a, a um, as a particular piece of, of, of information within a particular information resource. And you know, since a resource, you know, has to have an identifier, a location, a means of retrieving it, and that's sort of like what I'm interested in in the context of, say, documents, like a, a document is a composite information resource, at least almost always. I mean, you can have a, a document that contains a single fact but uh, you typically don't. Uh, they're typically composed and they're usually uh, in a particular order, or at least they, they have a partial order to them. And that's kind of like what a document means. So the problem that I'm looking at is it's like, okay, well you say, well a document is a particular kind of, of information resource. You look to this particular document for, you know, assertions of facts, states of affairs, arguments, that kind of thing. The assertions that was, so you, you're going to have an argument that's going to be based on facts, like hopefully at least, or states of affairs. And I mean, a fact and a state is not the same thing. You know, we, we use the terms interchangeably, but when you think about how a, you know, the, the example that uh, Rich Hickey gave in his talk is that, uh, you know, uh, it was Bill Clinton was president of the U.S., but he's not the president of the U.S. anymore, but he was. And so there was a time where, you know, the, the, the state or sort of the, 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 the statement of state of affairs was that he, he was, the, there was a, you know, from 1996 to 2001, 97 to 2001, he was. And, um, you know, but he's not anymore. But the fact that he was is immutable. The fact that he was, you, you would have to go back in time and uh, in order to change that. And so that is sort of the difference between a fact and a state, a state of affairs, 
to be clear. And uh, Hickey's indictment of computer uh, technology is that we only store the current state, not the, the, the history of all of the facts. And of course, the state can be superseded by new facts. And uh, you know, he argues that this was an expedient because it was the uh, the capacity available for the technology was just not there. So you had to erase stuff. And what you wanted was you wanted the current state because that's what you were working with. Now. When you think about load-bearing information and load-bearing information resources, you want to go to an information resource, for instance, to retrieve the current state of a particular state of affairs, but the facts may have changed since. And so you, when you go to the resource, the resource is the thing that you go to to get the, 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 the information contained within it. And the state of affairs of, like, the fact of documents, the, the, that, uh, the, that documents encapsulate information and they do it, they're composite, what this means is that they're just like a big soup of, of potential for, for, for going out of date. And then it's a whole chore to uh, get them back up to date. And so then the question is, well, what if you could separate you know, these, these factual statements, these sort of you know, end states of affairs, uh, such that they were separate from the document, they were their own resource. So Fielding in his rest paper, uh, or maybe not in the actual paper itself, uh, and I should say dissertation, but... Uh, uh, in, in other stuff Roy Fielding has written, talks about information resources that, I mean, it's basically the difference between a, a permalink and, a, and a, 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 a whatever the thing is at the time. So when you sort of think about like what, you know, the homepage of the New York Times is right now like, versus what it was a few minutes ago versus what it was yesterday and so on and so forth. And now you can, and I don't know the extent that they do this, but you could imagine like assigning a URL to every time the, the state of the homepage changes. So there's like homepage at this instant in time going back as long as they've had one. And that's a, that's a doable thing. And that was sort of one of, uh, of Fielding's ideas in, in, in REST uh, that doesn't really seem to get transmitted a lot of the time. REST is a much, much, much bigger and richer idea than you know, web APIs. And so given that, though, you can say, you know, well, you know, this particular set of facts, and we're talking about knowledge graphs now, you can say this particular set of facts is this produces, you can compute the state of affairs from a particular set of facts at a particular instant. And then, you know, as time goes forward, you can compute another state of affairs. And then if you've got documents, the documents can refer to those by address, so by URL, because we can make as many URLs as you want. And if, you're, if the document's prose makes arguments based on states of affairs, then you can actually determine, well, if this state of affairs at this particular time is invalidated, uh, you know, like you say, like something is twice as much as this, and then the, like, the thing number changes, then it's like not twice as much, maybe it's like one and a half times or three times or whatever. Um, you can go back and, and, and it'll give you a signal to change the pros at that point. And I mean, this is not even talking about, you know, artificial intelligence or whatever, which, you know, potentially you could do. Um, but, but rather just structuring information in such a way that the, as the facts accumulate, as the states change, 
and then the sort of arguments and claims made about those and sort of conclusions and inferences will necessarily need to be changed as well. So this is like all stuff that we are very bad at still, despite having all of the infrastructure in place to do it. And with that, have a good weekend. I'm going to finish my coffee.